Okay, in a previous section we already talked about the graphs of sine and cosine. So in this section we're going to talk about the other four trig functions. So particularly it's going to be secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent graphs. The first ones we're going to take a look at are going to be the cosecant and secant graphs because the section right before this one was ones dealing with these sine and cosine graphs. So we're going to start with that because it kind of follows from that section. So in order to do the cosecant graph, we notice that the definition or the uh, identity for it would be 1 over sine. So that means that the, the graph of cosecant is going to be re related to the sine graph. So I've already drawn the sine graph already from the previous section. Here's our key points here, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that's all going to be the same key points as before. And now we're going to use this in order to draw the graph of the cosecant, which is 1 over sine. So every place where the sine graph crosses the x-axis, that's where the sine value equals zero. If you put a zero in this, then you have a vertical asymptote there because one divided by zero, you can't do that, it's undefined. So every place where the sine graph crosses the x-axis, what we're gonna do is put in a vertical line through, so I'm gonna draw these in, and this one's gonna get a dotted line as well. These would be the vertical asymptotes there. We're going to have those, again, because that's where sine is 0, 1 over 0 is undefined. The graph itself for cosecant, that's going to be in between these two vertical uh, asymptotes. It's going to come down, it'll touch the sine graph at the very top, and then go up. So the solid line that I'm drawing in for each of these, this is actually what the whole graph is going to be. So if you were to look at this, uh, in a graphing program or a calculator, all you would actually see would be these darkened areas here, the, uh, the solid areas. Everything else is all going to be a setup. So basically, however far up or down the cosecant goes, that's where the, or where the sine graph uh, crosses there, that's where the cosecant will come down. They, they touch right there. So if the sine graph went up to 2, for instance, that means that this would come down and, and touch that at 2 or at negative 2 here. So this is what your cosecant look like, is these solid pieces there. Now let's take a look at the secant graph. Now the secant graph uh, is related to cosine because secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So like this one, wherever it crosses the x-axis, I'm going to put dotted lines in for those as well. So again, that's because if this is 0, I'm dividing by 0 undefined. That's why we have a vertical asymptote there. The graph here, it's going to do the same thing. The solid part's going to come here, and it'll touch right there at the bottom of the cosine graph. Now these, they actually look like this. Now in this case, what I've drawn here, I don't have a full uh, curve shape like I have here. I have, I have a half one. That would be considered one full period. Now if you don't want to have it just end like this, and you want the full uh, curve all the way up like that, then we'll just put one more key point here. If we add uh, a half a pi, because all these you're adding half a pi all the way, if you add a half pi to this you get 5 pi over 2 and that we have another vertical asymptote and so therefore your cosine graph would come back down to here and then this would be the full uh, cycle. So you have one down and one up if you wanted to draw it that way. But what I had before just up to here that's okay as well because that would be considered one complete cycle. And you notice for both of these the period for both of these is going to still be 2 pi. That's because they both follow off the sine and the cosine graph. So sine and cosine graphs have periods of 2 pi. So these graphs will also follow and they'll also have a period of 2 pi.